Hello, this is HT Wingnut, and today I'm going to show you a general overview of the uh, Acer E11 laptop. Um, it is a 2.4 pound, 11.6 inch notebook um, that uh, has a ULV CPU, and, uh, but uh, what makes it interesting is it's a $250 laptop that has expandability to it, so you're not stuck with the uh, traditional 2 gigs or, you know, 32 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigabyte flash memory that a lot of these uh, systems offer, you know, that you can't even upgrade, so you're kind of limited in your performance. Uh, but we'll go ahead and go through all the features here of uh, this laptop real quick. Um, uh, you can see here that uh, I have the specs listed over here. It's the Acer E11 ES1111MP2YU. As I mentioned, it's 11.6 inch uh, LCD, but it is a matte non-touch 1366 by 768 LCD um, it's uh, uh, viewing angles are pretty not the greatest but contrast and brightness are decent and it's a good general purpose screen and not 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 too bad um, it is a 30 pin EDP um, before we go there let's do this um, let's close this you can see that the uh, monitor uh, see, it is a uh, AUO B116XTN02.3. It is a 30-pin EDP connector, so there might be expansion options there too. It'd be nice to be able to get an IPS screen in here, uh, but that's something for later. Uh, moving on here, we've got uh, Intel Pentium N3540 quad core, 2.16 to 2.66 gigahertz with boost. It is a passive cooling system, so there's no fan, no sound at all in this system. Uh, that is a seven and a half watt TDP CPU, so it's you know probably borderline uh, cooling, but it does have a, a heat sink and a, a, a copper heat pipe on it, but it just has no fan on it. It just kind of touches down to the uh, base plate of the keyboard, and at seven and a half watts, you're never going to feel heat coming up through that keyboard at all. Um, system itself runs about uh, peak. Well, let's see, this is probably hasn't been stressed very hard right now, but. It runs at the peak about 68 to 70 C. I haven't seen it go above 70 C yet, uh, but I did uh, re repaste the uh, the heat sink on the uh, CPU. The stock thermal paste ran up to about 80 C. So when I took the system apart, I went ahead and repasted it. Um, what else do we have here? It oh, the nice thing is it is a 64-bit operating system, um, which means that you can accommodate oh, more than four gigs, no problem. And this system has a single RAM slot uh, for DDR3L 1333 megahertz, but a 1600 megahertz chip will work as well, as long as it's 1.35 volt or DD3L, DDR3L. But do know that this is Windows 8.1 with Bing. Now, Windows 8.1 with Bing is not, uh, you cannot use a, a traditional Windows 8.1 ISO or CD to install. So if you want to do a clean installation, um, you need to find it on the internet, and I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, but basically all that with Bing means is that, I guess, Microsoft offers um, OEMs um, very low cost or free OS as long as it comes stock with I, uh, Internet Explorer as a default browser and Bing as a default search provider. But as you can see, you can easily install any other browser you want and set any other search provider. So. But what I would highly recommend, why is this doing this? Interesting, okay, is um, doing a clean install. You're looking at this as a clean install because the stock install on the Acer system was, you know, a bunch of crap wire. With two gigs of RAM, it was just slow as snot. So I went ahead and just did a clean install and everything works great. Um, continuing on, I uh, came with a 250 gig uh, Western Digital Blue 5400 RPM hard drive. Uh, I swapped that out. It's a two and a half inch um, slot, seven mil thick, so you can fit pretty much any SSD in there. And uh, I threw in a uh, SanDisk X110 256 gigabyte SSD. Uh, it came with a Qualcomm, a basic 802.11n wireless card, which could transfer six to eight megabytes per second. But I had an Intel 7260 wireless card, 802.11ac. That I added. Uh, so now I can download and upload at about 40 to 50 megabytes per second. So that's a, a good uh, and expensive option if you want a good wireless coverage. So the nice thing is it has two uh, wireless or two uh, 
wires go antennas go into this. You know, sometimes in these cheap laptops they just put a single wire, which makes your signal pretty crappy. But the signal is actually very good with this. Um, it does have a 30 watt hour battery. Um, let's see. Let's go back over here first. You can see the SanDisk SSD, the RAM. And uh, the battery is a 30 watt hour battery, and I've I've gotten typically about yeah five and a half hours is typical runtime, as you can see down there. Um, and that's general purpose web browsing and videos, watching YouTube, etc. Uh, the system itself is about 2.4 pounds. I weighed it, and it's also about three quarter inch in the back, and tapers down to about half inch thick in the front. It comes with a 40 watt uh, power supply. It's 19 volt, 2.1 amp. It's really small, and it has a a plug into a, a brick, so it's not like a wall ward or anything. So that's kind of a nice thing to have as well. Um, you know, this this is not uh, it's a, a great general purpose laptop. Um, like I said, it, 250 bucks from Amazon or BH Photo Video or, or one of those places, and uh, if you add your own SSD, you know, add eight gigs of RAM, and if you decide to upgrade the uh, wireless card too, I mean, it'll set you back another 200 to 220 bucks maybe, uh, but you'll end up with a much faster system. And it's 450 dollars, 480 dollar laptop that's small, light, portable, and pretty powerful. Then. Um, I also wanted to note that this also has gigabit ethernet. That's one thing that's uh, definitely a nice feature to have. Uh, I forgot to bring that up when I brought up the wireless, but it does have a gigabit ethernet port too. So, you know, if you need uh, fast transfer speeds, you can plug in and away you go. Um, the, uh, you know, this isn't a system that you're going to be gaming on or anything, but it can hold its own in general purpose computing. But I'll show... Okay... I did run 3D Mark 11 and 3D Mark Vantage on this just to give you an idea. But you can see it's a P266 score on 3D Mark 11 with a 232 graphics score. Uh, nothing to write home about, but hey, um, it actually performs well with Minecraft and also some older titles, you know, like uh, Freelancer and um, Half Life and Half Life 2 and, and Portal and a lot of the, the uh, source type games. Then all the other classics like Deus Ex and Thief and heck, a whole slew of them, you know, Coder and Coder 2. Um, I haven't tried like LOL, I know it's a pretty popular game. I um, might try that later to see if that even works well with this. Um, there's the 3D Mark Vantage score of 781 with a GPU score of 617, CPU score of 4472. Um, Cinemage R15, you're not going to be doing any major video rendering, but Here's the score another, nevertheless, 153 uh, for the quad-core CPU and 42 for the single. Um, you don't need to see CPU-Z, we'll look at that in a minute. And then W-Prime at 32 million calculations at 23.769 seconds and 1024 million at uh, 841.591 seconds. And uh, speaking of which, yes, we will see if I can do CPU-Z. There we go. Let's take a look at it. As noted, this is an Intel Pentium. N3540 CPU, Bay Trail technology at 22 nanometers. Um, it, it is a quad core, full co four cores, four cores, four threads. Um, cache, you know, small cache, but uh, it helps. And then memory, here it says 800, which you double that for DDR, so it's 1600 effective, but that's not correct. Um, if you look in, uh, where in the heck did it go? Here you can see it says 666.7 megahertz, double that, 1333 megahertz is what it's running at. Um, it says dual channel, which I'm not sure how that's possible because it's only a single stick. So some of the stuff is being reported incorrectly, but hopefully with some updates to these programs we'll, we'll get the real facts here. But my guess is that it is at 1333 megahertz because that's what the uh, CPU is spec'd for. Um, so and I believe that is it for now. Um, so hopefully that was useful. I think it's a great little system, something that's uh, uh, portable but powerful. I got sick and tired of using the, all these little uh, systems with 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gig of flash storage with no expansion options. And they just, 
almost just barely good enough to do what you want to do for basic stuff but this is uh, definitely an inexpensive option to uh, give you better performance and still not spend a whole lot of money so hopefully you enjoyed this video um, and uh, hope to bring you some more info maybe some more uh, benchmarks live and see what it can do I also forgot to mention that uh, the system has uh, the ports on it are pretty limited but it has uh, two USB ports one of them is a USB 2.0 the other one is a USB 3.0 um, and uh, it has a full-size HDMI jack and the gigabit Ethernet port and a card reader uh, that's about the extent of it there I um, also wanted to mention that uh, the even though it's got a, a 40 watt power brick, the brick itself is actually really tiny. The um, system only pulls about 16 watts at peak. Um, so it's uh, really light uh, light on power use. And uh, with uh, light use here, I'm not showing it here, if I go to battery mode, um, it'll run, you know, maybe 4 to 7 watts draw on battery. So it's actually pretty, pretty power sipping, and uh, so it can get you the life that you need on it. So, anyhow.